welcome to the art channel. This week Josh and myself are going to be reviewing two pieces of publicly accessible art in central London. Uh, the first is called The Gift Horse by Hans Hacker and it's on the fourth plinth in Trafalgar Square. And the second one is by Frank Stella and it's called Inflated Star and Wooden Star. And although strictly speaking not a piece of public sculpture, it can be seen by anybody in the courtyard of the Royal Academy. And so the fourth plinth is an ongoing um, public art project uh, sponsored by uh, the Mayor of London. And historically the fourth plinth was left empty after the original plan to mount a uh, portrait of King William IV on a horse was abandoned in the 19th century. So it's always been a rather an anomaly in a public space uh, such as Trafalgar Square, this great site of national uh, commemoration. And in the past few years, um, there's been the push to have this program of public sculpture, so it allows, mm -hmm. through competition, a number of artists to exhibit a large-scale sculpture or intervention mm -hmm. in that space. Uh, most famously, of course, Anthony Gormley's uh, public performance piece, mm -hmm. whereby he invited a series of um, members, anonymous members of the public, to inhabit that space mm -hmm. as if they were sculptural presence. Mm. Yeah, it was a fun thing. I think you could sign up and you had to write a couple of lines about what you might do mm. and you got your, your 15 minutes of fame, so to speak. Um, this is, a, I guess, a more conventional piece of sculpture. It's going to be there for about a year and it's the 10th um, recent piece that's been put on, on the plinth. Um, this rotating series of sculptures, I think, is a really nice way to engage us all as we kind of rush through mm. central London. It is a, a large a bronze skeleton of a horse and on its front leg which is raised off the plinth is a, a, a large ribbon with a, the ticker from uh, the London Stock Exchange giving the prices um, in kind of live time, in real time. Um, it's, it's quite an arresting piece, it's a huge piece of work um, and it refers to kind of as you say equestrian sculpture, of celebratory sculpture, um, of kind of pomp and ceremony really. Yes, um, I am ambivalent about how successful it is. Um, it's a, a technically very accomplished piece mm. of casting, of animal anatomy. I mean, it's, it's striking because you mm. see a skeleton where you would expect to see a fully fleshed horse or a simulation of one. Um, so it's clever. Um, with the addition of the ticker tape, of course, it makes overt reference to commerce, to the City of London, to trading, and it was uh, rather ironic how the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, mm. seemed rather torn between supporting the merits of the horse um, on the one hand, but uh, perhaps defending uh, the commercial activity of the City of London. Uh, but but that beside the point there, um, it, it's a sculpture that is ambitious, that's bold, but it feels rather like a gimmick. It mm. feels as gestural. Mm. I think I agree. I think uh, I've seen it two or three times and I don't think the next two or three times I see it is going to add anything to my experience. It's, uh, it's kind of one joke, it's one line. Obviously it's about money and power and the West End and the East End of London being connected through mm. art, through money and Hacker is very interested in these areas and yeah. uh, exploring them through a kind of series of pieces of work but this um, I don't think is going to sustain us for a year maybe. Yes, it, it, it's not particularly moving or intellectually engaging. It's very current, it's very topical, mm. and I think perhaps that's why the jury selected it. Although my preference was for the Marcus Coates piece uh, that was exhibited um, alongside some other artists mm. in the crypt of uh, the church there, uh, St. Martin's, in the fields. Um, but of course there are nice echoes, aren't there? Um, resonances that can flow into the National Gallery mm. if you walk into the National Gallery behind it to see Whistle Jacket yes. by George yeah. Stubbs painted in 1764, this most miraculous depiction of a rearing horse in all its sort of glory yeah. and animal sort of primitivism. Mm. I think maybe the references, the connections, are more interesting than the piece itself, as you say. So we have connections to royalty, to the City of London, and to, as you say, Stubbs and his uh, amazing um, explorations of equine anatomy, which were really radical at the time, and are exquisite etchings and drawings, and this one I think references one in particular. So I think when you get the backstory, the narrative, the connections, it's, it's sustaining, but in and of itself, 
I'm not so sure. Mm. And of course, George Stubbs famously would cut out the walls mm -hmm. mm -hmm. before the arrival of photography. He had to study literally the sinews and musculature of the horses. The second piece we're going to look at is by Frank Stella, an American artist who was actually born in the same year as Hans Hacker, 1936, and he is an honorary Royal Academician, which is why he has a piece in the courtyard at the Royal Academy in Piccadilly. And the piece is called Inflated Star and Wooden Star, and um, I think we'd agree we both prefer this. It's a very engaging, very exciting piece of um, publicly accessible sculpture. Yeah, it's a really stunning piece of, of sculpture, really. Um, it's so bold and sort of finished and resolved because, of course, it's drawing on the harmony of geometry mm. and all of that perfection. And so you have the wooden sculptural piece, which is hollow, um, you trans transparent, mm -hmm. you just see the ribs and the structure or the skeleton of the sculpture, um, totally exposed, it has no mass. Mm -hmm. Beside, of course, the larger silver piece, which is entirely about its skin mm -hmm. and its surface, and reflection and light bounces off it, and he adds a very clever detail. So we have more than simply a symmetrical geometric star, but he adds a kind of organic wave, mm. a little kind of um, uh, kink yeah. that, that amplifies the reflective properties of that skin. I think it's really exciting because he is playing with illusions of space in every way mm. and it's a piece that asks you to engage and to figure it out and there's a real joy in the materials amazing kind of high-tech shiny metal and beautiful teak kind of sitting together in this larger-than-life piece so I think that really engages you um, physically I think as well and of course it's in the courtyard of this um, sort of 17th century palace on the side of, um, of Piccadilly so the contrast is incredible it's very spare it's very clean it's very beautiful and He's an artist who is used to playing with illusions, as was famously through layers of print mm. and very graphic images. And his graphic image, this time uh, conceived on a computer, kind of springs into life very successfully. And it's a duality, isn't it? Of kind of, it's almost like it has a yin mm. and yang, mm. um, complementary harmonies, mm. really. And the other thing I noticed that I really uh, appreciated was the the mount or the stand itself. Mm. Um, rises up in quite a complex way, like a scaffold, yeah. and the effect is to tilt the stars slightly off-center, mm -hmm. so they are pushed, as it were, off their axis mm -hmm. and projected forwards, but of course the, the, the supporting structure becomes integral to yeah. the entire sculptural yeah. experience. I totally agree, because I think sometimes uh, sculpture, and in particular public sculpture, is very awkward. It sits mm. on a, a nasty, awkward, um, utilitarian plinth, mm. which is so separate from what the artist wanted to say. But here the thing is conceived as a whole, and it really works. It's, it's, it's much more uh, exciting. There's a kind of integration of all of its parts, mm. and those contrasts and harmonies mm. I was discussing earlier it's sort of come together to, to make something that's very complete and well considered mm. and made. It's a really, it's a very impressive piece yeah, yeah, of sculpt, outdoor sculpture. Mm. And I think for me more successful than the piece in Trafalgar Square because it is much more honest, it doesn't rely perhaps on what I consider are fairly sort of cheap connections, it just, you can walk in and know nothing about it and you will be kind of consumed by it I think. And there's a kind of um, courage and inquisitiveness there that still feeds mm. into uh, Stella's practice um, in his mid-70s mm. now. Um, and it makes art, contemporary art, feel relevant and dynamic and um, kind of um, relevant. Yeah, I think it's not... Um, it's not relying on its connections, it's just somebody who's really enjoying making um, a really simple, in a good way, piece of work. You just connect to it immediately, I think. So I think we can agree mm. uh, that the Frank Stella is well worth seeing. You will probably see the Hans Hacker. Yeah. Um, it's kind of unavoidable there in the centre of London. And I think we both 
support and celebrate yeah. Uh, the platform for making Definitely. public sculpture, publicly funded sculpture, um, on a rotating mm. basis, because it kind of um, enlivens mm. that um, otherwise uh, redundant uh, space. Absolutely, and good to make a, a quick comparison. So you have a you have a year for the hacker that will be there, mm. there until next spring, uh, and I think the Frank Stella is until the twelfth of May. So so less long to go and look at the Stella. Thank you very much. Thank you. And please do look out for our film of the Luke Tymans exhibition, David's Werner, that we will be posting shortly.